Welcome back to Chemistry B. This is Unit 6, States of Matter and the Gas Loss. This is Day 3. Today we're going to talk about the nature of solids. We've already talked about the nature of liquids and nature of gases, so we're going to today talk about the nature of solids. Now, the general properties of a solid reflect the orderly arrangement of their particles and the fixed locations of their particles. So the reason why they act or behave the way they do is because of the orderly arrangement of their particles and the fixed locations of those particles. All right, The particles in a solid are extremely close to each other. They're tightly packed. The, this gives them a dense arrangement and when they're dense that means they're they're the right next to each other and there's not a lot of space in between so that's why they're not easily compressed or squeezed can't be squeezed easily and the fact that the particles are vibrating around fixed points do not allow solids the ability to flow like they can and like gases can flow and liquids can flow because they're attached and vibrating on a, on, a, on a fixed location, they cannot flow, right? And as you know, if you heat something, it generally gives it more kinetic energy, all right? Heating solids will give the particles more kinetic energy, which in turn will cause the structure of the solid to break down, and it will eventually melt, okay? So that's the first step in this phase change from a solid is that it has to melt and it melts because the energy in the particles increases when you give it more kinetic energy all right and the melting point <clears throat> is the point at which a solid begins to turn into a liquid the key here is begins to turn into a liquid not completely turns into a liquid but the point at which it begins to turn into a liquid. Why again is there melting? Because the increased vibrations are big enough that they overcome the strong attraction which holds them in a fixed place. So let's take a look here. We have a solid and it melts. All right. And when it melts, it turns into a liquid. And the opposite of melting you should know this, correct? It's freezing, all right? So liquid freezes into a solid, solids melt into a liquid, all right? Solids are made up of crystals. They have a crystalline structure. It is a 3D repeating pattern or, uh, uh, called a crystal lattice. Not all solids are crystals, but most of them are. The shape of the crystal reflects the arrangement of the particles within the solid. All right? Bonding type between the particles is what determines the melting point. So if it's got a low melting point, it's because it's bonded differently than something that has a high melting point. Melting point is determined by bonding type. Ionic, covalent, that kind of bond type. All right? In ionic bonding, we have high melting point because of the strong forces that hold them together. As you re recall from chemistry A, ionic bonding is the strongest of the two bo major bond types that we've talked about. They, ha they are the stronger ones because of that opposites attracting and all that jazz. Molecular bonding or covalent bonding has a lower mo melting point because those are not as strong of bonds. So the stronger the bond, the higher the energy mm, required to break those bonds. And <clears throat> that makes sense to you. We've talked about that before. All right. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. There are crystal systems out there, and each in crystals have sides, which we call faces. And the angles of where the faces intersect are always the same for a specific substance. So, a for example, sodium chloride. A sodium chloride crystal structure will always look identical. They will always have the faces intersecting at the same place for that sodium chloride. Uh, a unit cell is the smallest group of particles with a crystal that retains the geometric shape of that crystal. So 
by breaking it down, breaking down a crystal, that smallest part that retains that same overall shape of the crystal is called a unit cell. All right. There are 14 kinds of unit cells. All right. Okay, allotropes are two or more different molecular forms of the same element in the same physical state. So what this means is that you can have an allotrope of something, that it will have, it will look one way and have a different molecular makeup one way, and it could be the same type of, of uh, element, same molecular compound, the same molecular makeup, but it's just they're arranged differently uh, and it's not very often but it does occur all right some solid substances will exist in more than one form okay uh, for example some of the greatest ones are carbon carbon is one of the um, substances that will have two or more different molecular forms of the same element in the same physical state uh, carbon will exist as diamonds, and they can also exist as graphite um, and in buckyballs. Now, what I want you to do for your um, discussion purposes for tomorrow is to have a definition of buckyball written down. What is a buckyball? That is going to be your homework for tomorrow. All right, define buckyball. All right, allotropes will have different properties because of their structures are different. So they, their properties will be different be based on their structures being different. But for example, you know, carbon is black, uh, graphite is black, I should say, and uh, diamonds are not black. Um, after we shine them up, they look really nice and they have different properties, okay? Only some elements have allotropes. Not every element has an allotrope. Uh, phosphorus is one. Sulfur, oxygen, boron, and antimony also are elements that will have allotropes. Okay. Now, there is also something called amorphous solids. Amorphous solids lack orderly inside structure. In other words, they are non-crystalline. They are not made of the crystalline substance or structure I should say they have a more random arrangement of their atoms rather than the orderly arrangement of the atoms as a crystal substance does okay rubber is a amorphous solid some plastics are amorphous solid asphalt is an amorphous solid as is glass 